Hey everybody, it's Kristen and welcome back to my channel, All The Stories. Today I'm going to be doing my February wrap up. You guys, I read 28 books in February. 28. I challenged myself to read a book a day in February and I did it. It took a lot. It took a whole lot, but I did it. And I'm super excited. It kind of put me into reading something March, but hey, okay, I did it. Oh, and this is also my booktube games wrap up technically because I did participate in the booktube games. Go team dairy, even though, you know, we kind of lost. It doesn't matter, okay? I had fun. This is my booktube games February Black History Month wrap up. Since I have a lot of books to talk about, I do want to say that I'm not going to be going into detail with a lot of the books. I'm not going to be going super in depth with the plots. I'm going to give you the bare minimum, kind of sort of what is it about, and then my basic thoughts on it. But nothing too in-depth because I did think about doing this in two parts but I'm going to try to go ahead and crank it out in one video so yeah trying to keep this video short so let's just hop into all the stories so the first book I finished in February was a book that I started actually in January and I finished it um in February that book is Siege and Storm by Lee Bardugos and this is the second book in the Grisha trilogy I'm not super enjoying this book um or the, not necessarily this book but this series I'm I don't know I just maybe because Six of Crows like her writing style got so much better that I'm just expecting too much out of this series I don't know what it is and I'm just not meshing with this series I am going to finish it because I do want to read King of Scars so I gave this three stars it's not like I hated it I just didn't really feel any particular way about it it was just kind of meh for me so I gave this three stars these <laughs> I had all, all 20 something of these books stacked up next to me and the whole pile just uh, just fell so give me a sec. The second book that I finished in February was Pride by Elisa Boy. This is a Pride and Prejudice retelling set in modern day Brooklyn. This is about this girl named Zuri Benitez who is Afro-Latina and she is really proud of her Brooklyn neighborhood. She has a lot of Brooklyn pride. When the rich Darcy family moves in next door, Zuri is not too pleased, but her and her sister end up connecting to the Darcy brothers. And I gave this 4.5 stars out of 5. I really enjoyed it. Highly recommend it if you like Pride and Prejudice. Next, I ended up reading Their Eyes Are Watching God by Zora Neale Hurston. This was a reread for me. I read this book in high school because I had to read it for my English class and I really loved it. And I wanted to reread it this month and I actually annotated it and tabbed it. And this is the first book I ever annotated like for fun. And I really loved it. This is a histor this is like a black historical novel. This follows this woman named Janie and it just follows her whole life story from basically from childhood to adulthood and her husband she's had and the life she lives. And it's just super good. I gave it five stars. The next book that I read was Tiny Pretty Things by Sonia Chakraporta and Danielle Clayton. This is a contemporary novel about this ballet conservatory um, and this is about this girl who's new to the school and the drama is so much drama. These dance girls are super dramatic and trifling and stuff happens. They try to sabotage each other, a lot of stuff happens. But I did like this but I didn't love it. I gave this three stars as well. Um, and I am going to continue on with the second book. I do already own the second book. This is a duology. I will continue on and read the second book, but I gave this three stars. The next book that I read was a reread, and I wasn't really planning to read this this month because I read this book pretty recently. I read this book back in November, like the week of Thanksgiving last November, so like two or three months ago. Well, two, about two months ago at the time I picked this book up, and I really wasn't planning on reading it. I didn't want to reread it, but it was my teen's group book, so I just decided why not and it was bonus points to read it so I read it again and I'm not mad that I read it because I really do love the book and that is Renegades by Marissa Meyer. I really love this book. I gave it five stars yet again. This is a superhero story. This, in this world people are born with powers and you're either a superhero or a villain and blah 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 and it's just a really great story. The next book that I read was disappointing. <laughs> I'm sorry it was disappointing to me and a lot of people are going to be really mad about this because this is a really well-loved book. I will like give a little warning for this by saying I love this movie. I watched the movie before I read the book and love 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 the movie and then that inspired me to pick up this book and I did not love the book. The movie and the book are so different and I haven't mentioned what book it is yet. It's Howl's Moving Castle by Deanna Wayne Jones. I did not like this book. I <laughs> was so disappointed like it's 
it's different it's, it's very similar but it also has very key differences and i prefer the studio ghibli like changes that the movie made like way more than the actual book i gave this two stars like i was so hurt so hurt to give this book two stars <sighs> fight me i don't i I don't see why so many people love this book. I don't. I don't. Sorry. If this is your favorite book, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just. I really wanted to like it. I just didn't at all. I. I didn't. I didn't think the main characters had chemistry in the book. I didn't like the changes. I just didn't like it. <clears throat> T. So going on from a book that. I really didn't like to a book that I loved. The next book that I read was The Sun is Also a Star by Nicolini. How have I gone years without ever reading this book? This book has been out for a couple years now and I'm just hopping on the train reading this book and it was so good. Like I loved it. I loved the love story and I was thinking oh this is gonna be super... Ugh. I didn't think I'd hate it because I do love Nicolini as an author. So I just thought it was going to be like super insta lovey, and I was expecting it because it's a love story that takes place in a day, and it is kind of insta lovey. okay, it, it's a love story that takes place in a day, but it's so good, the characters are super relatable and super cute, and the romance is so cute and fun, but it also deals with heavy topics like immigration and deportation, and it was so good! If you don't know what this is, this is a book about this girl named Natasha who is being deported. She is a immigrant from Jamaica. Her family is originally from Jamaica, but she has lived in the U.S. her whole life. And her family ends up being deported. And on her last day in town, she's trying to stop this deportation from happening. And she runs into this boy, this Korean-American boy named Daniel, who is the sweetest cinnamon roll. And they end up having this whirlwind romance over like 12 hours. And is phenomenal and you should read it oh also look at these purple suede edges they're gorgeous the next thing that i read was a novella and that is night of cake and puppets by Rainey taylor this was so cute if you don't know this is the novella that goes along with the daughter of smoke and bone trilogy and it follows two of the characters in that series the main character's best friend and her love interest in the book and it follows the story of how they met and how they started dating. And I know I don't have time to gush about this book that much, but look at how pretty this cover is, you guys. Like, the art is gorgeous. Like, that's the main female character, Zuzana, and then that's the male character, the love interest. And, like, there is art work all through this. Like, the chapter headings are gorgeous, and there's art that is through the book and it's just amazing i loved it i gave this five stars so if you read the daughter of smoke and bone trilogy and just never picked up the companion i mean it's not necessary to a series at all but if you just want a cute fluffy love story this is so cute and so amazing and i recommend you read it if you've read the daughter of smoke and bone trilogy and it just made me want to reread it because i miss these characters and it was a great time the next book that I read was another Marissa Meyer novel, and that is Heartless by Marissa Meyer. This is a Queen of Hearts origin story. It's basically a story about how the Queen of Hearts became who she was in um, the Alice in Wonderland story. And I thought this was really cute. I gave this four stars, and I recommend you reading it. It's just a good time, and it's a standalone. So there's not that many standalone fantasies out there. So if you're looking for a good standalone fantasy, there you go. The next book that I read was also a fantasy, and that is A Fire and Stars by Audrey Coulthers. This is just a fantasy, and this fantasy there's magic involved, and this also features a female-female romance. So that's something that, that you don't see very often in fantasy, and so if you're interested in any of that, pick this up. I don't know if I mentioned it, I gave this four stars. The next thing that I read was something I also didn't like too much, and that is Piper by Jay Asher and Jessica Freeberg. This is a graphic novel and it is a Pied Piper retelling. I also gave this two stars. I didn't really like this. The two stars is mainly for the artwork because I do like the artwork. The artwork is really cool in here, but I did not like the story. I didn't really like the characters. I just didn't like it and I gave it two stars. 
So the next six books that I'm going to mention, I read for a contemporary -thon. I didn't really go into the week with the intentions of participating in contemporary contemporary -thon. But then on the second day of the readathon, I realized I was planning on reading contemporaries anyway, so I just decided to go with the flow and participate in contemporary -thon. So I'm going to tell you the books I read, my thoughts on them, and the prompts that they fell, they fit, and the prompts that they fit for the challenge. So the first book that I read for Contemporary Thon was On the Come Up by Angie Thomas, and this was for the challenge, read the last contemporary book that you purchased. So I read On the Come Up and I really liked this. I gave this 4.5 4. stars, I think, or 5 stars, I don't know. I think I gave this 4.5 stars. I really enjoyed this. This is the second novel by Angie Thomas, who is the author of The Hate You Give, and this is about a girl named Brie who is, dreams of becoming a rapper, and it's just about her pursuing those dreams, and it was really fun, really good. If you like The Hate You Give, I'm pretty sure you would love this as well. So the next challenge was read a book with sensitive subject matter, and for that I read The Way I Used to Be by Amber Smith, and I gave this five stars. It was super good, um, and the sensitive subject matter was rape. This book deals with a girl who is raped her freshman year of high school by her brother's best friend. And it's just, it follows her through all four years of high school. It's broken into four parts, freshman, sophomore, junior, and senior year. And it follows her on her journey through high school and how this event has affected her life. And it's so good. It was five stars. I obvious trigger warning for sexual assault, rape, but super good. If you can deal with the subject matter, I highly recommend you read this. So the next challenge for contemporary Contemporary-a-thon that I read a book for was read a book with purple on the cover and that means a book with blue or purple on the cover and for that I read The Smell of Other People's Houses by Bonnie Sue Hitchcock. This is a short novel. This book takes place in Alaska and it follows the lives of various teenagers living in Alaska in the 1960s and it's just their stories and their life and the things that are going on in their life. There is teen pregnancy in this and a lot of other topics are dealt with and it's a really good book. I was not expecting to like this book as much as I did. I gave this book four stars. And the next contemporary thon challenge was read a book with an illustration on the spine and I read A List of Cages by Robin Rowe. This illustration is there's a star and a little person on the spine and this was another five star read for me. It was so good. Again, another book with sensitive subject matter. There's a trigger warning for sexual abuse, child abuse, mental abuse. It's just a lot. Again, if you can handle, but if you can handle the subject matter, it's definitely worth the read. I gave this five stars. It was phenomenal. It follows this boy who recently refined, reconnects with a boy that used to be his foster brother. He realizes that there are some things that are going on in this boy's life and he's trying to help him out. And it's just a moving heartwarming story that I recommend everyone read. The next contemporary Athon challenge was to read a book in a non-traditional format and for that I read When Dimple Met Rishi and I read this as an audiobook. I listened to this on audiobook and this was another cute read. I gave this 4.5 out of 5 stars. It was super cute little contemporary romance. It follows these two Indian men characters who their parents have arranged for them to be married and they end up meeting at this summer program for programmers. Haha. -ha. And they end up having a romance and it's super cute and just a fun read. The next challenge for Contemporary Athon was to read a book with a diverse cast and for that I read American Street by Edie Boy. This follows a girl named Fabiola Toussaint who is from Haiti and she and her mother are planning to move to the U.S. to live with Fabiola's aunt and her cousins. And when they arrive, Fabiola's mother is detained and she is going to be shipped back to Haiti so Fabiola goes to live with her aunt by herself. And it's a great story about family and dealing with some sister issues and it is obviously diverse as in the main cast of characters is black. Great read, four stars. There are seven challenges, I only finished six. I didn't finish the seventh challenge with a separate book. The seventh challenge was to read a book that you meant to read last year, but literally all of those your books have been on my shelf since last year. So you can count any of those for the seventh challenge, just so I can say that I did finish Contemporary Fun with all the challenges done. The next book that I read was Carval by Stephanie Garber. This was a book that I DNF'd last year. I got literally like halfway through this book last year and it just wasn't holding my attention so I ended up reading other things but I ended up picking this up back up and this time I picked it up on audiobook and I finished it and I liked it. I gave it 3.5 stars. It was a good read. It wasn't a great read for me. I ended up, I liked the characters, I liked the story but it just wasn't 
amazing for me where this takes place in a festival and it's about this girl and her sister go to this festival and her sister ends up being kidnapped and the prize of winning the festival is if you find the girl's sister you get a wish. Next I read Summer of Salt by Katrina Leno. It's magical realism and I gave this book 4.5 out of 5 stars. So this book takes place on this island called By the Sea and this island is very weird and strange and small but yeah it's about this girl she has a twin sister and the females in this family have magical abilities that manifest before age 18 but our main character has not manifested a power yet. Her sister does have a power and she can levitate but it's, our main character does not. And this book is mainly about the fact that there is a magical not magical but like a bird that's the only one of its kind that comes to this island every summer to nest and make eggs and this year the bird is missing it doesn't show up and it also features a female female romance between our main character and another girl who comes to the island with her brother who is a bird lover i recommend it next was another audiobook that i listened to this was really the month of audiobooks for me i'm not an audiobook person but i listened to a lot of them this month and that book was An Enchantment of Ravens by Margaret Rogerson. I gave this three stars or 3.5 stars. No, I gave this three stars. I didn't really enjoy it that much. It was really short, but it was very meh for me. It wasn't good, it wasn't bad. It had problems, but I don't know. It was just very in the middle for me. It is a fae fantasy story about this girl who's a painter and she paints pictures for the fae and she ends up meeting this autumn prince and they go on an adventure and there's romance and eh. the next book that i read was a manga and i read it on my kindle and that is hori Media volume three i gave hori Media volume three three stars um there wasn't anything that i didn't like about it it was just very it was kind of boring nothing really happened the whole time but i did i still enjoy the series and i did continue on with it the next book that i read was the help by Catherine stoquette and this is probably something you've already heard of. This was a very popular book. It does have a movie adaptation and I read it just because I owned it. I got this at a um, used bookstore for a couple of bucks so I decided to read it this month and I really liked this. I gave it four stars. I did watch the movie before I read the book and I thought felt that the movie was very true to the book and I liked the movie and I liked the book. So I gave this four stars. The next book that I read was Beneath the Sugar Sky by Shauna McGuire. Beneath the Sugar Sky is the third book in the Wayward Children series, which is a series of very short books. Um, they're kind of like novellas, I guess, companion novellas. I don't know how to explain it, but they're very good and I highly recommend them. I gave this one 3.5 stars. It was my least favorite out of all of them so far, but it still was very enjoyable. I liked seeing characters that we haven't seen since the first book. And I like the new characters that were introduced. I just didn't really like the story as much, the plot of the story as much as I liked in the other books, but it was still an enjoyable read and I still recommend the series. The next book that I read was another audiobook and that was The Wedding Date by Jasmine Guillory. This was great. I love this. It was a very cute romance novel about this girl who meets this guy on an elevator and he has a wedding that he needs to attend that weekend and doesn't have a date so he invites her to be his wedding date and it was just a great story. The main female character is black and the guy the main character is white and they just have this romance that takes place over the course of the next couple of weeks, months after the wedding and it was super enjoyable. I highly recommend it if you like um, adult romances. This is adult. There is some sex scenes in the book. If that's something that bothers you, I, won't recommend, I wouldn't recommend this one, but just know the scenes aren't super explicit, like it's not very graphic and detailed, so I still recommend this book to anyone who wants to give it a try. I gave this five stars. And then moving on with that series, I ended up reading The Proposal, also by Jasmine Guillory, which is a companion to The Wedding Date. The Proposal follows one of the side characters that you meet in The Wedding Date, and it was also another, yet again, cute romance. I actually gave this one four stars instead of five stars because I did like the wedding date more, but it's still super enjoyable. The plot of the proposal is that there's this girl who is at a baseball game with her boyfriend. She's only been dating for a couple of months and he drops down to one knee at the middle of the game on the Jumbotron and proposes to her and she says no. And this guy who is one of the characters that we meet in the wedding date comes to her rescue and kind of saves her from the press that kind of bombards her after she says no on national television. And of course a cute love story happens between those two characters. Three books left. We're almost there. Okay, 
The next book that I finished in the month of February was Daughter of the Burning City by Amanda Friedman. This is a standalone fantasy novel that takes place in this dark carnival called Gamora. And in this carnival, there's this girl who is an illusionist. She can create illusions. So she has made herself a family. She made her illusions there human-like, life-like. They have their own personalities, their own, their own thoughts, their own personalities. And one day, someone starts killing off her illusion, her illusion family, and she's trying to figure out who done it. And yeah, I gave this 4.5 stars. It was very good. And I think if you're a fan of things like carnival or like carnival fantasies or dark fantasies, you would give this a try because you might like it. Next, I read Sing and Barry Sing by Jasmine Ward. This is a contemporary novel and it follows this boy named Jojo who is 13. And it's basically about the fact that Jojo is biracial, his mother is black and his father is white. His mother is a drug addict, and his father is incarcerated. And at the beginning of the story, we get the news that Jojo's father is going to be released from prison. So his family goes on a road trip to pick his father up from prison. And when he's there, he meets a ghost that is connected to him in some kind of way so you do get three perspectives in the story you get the perspective of jojo his mother and the boy richie who is the ghost and it was very enjoyable i also gave this four stars and it does have like trigger warnings for like slavery and abuse and drug use so if any of those things are something you're not interested in i probably wouldn't pick this up but if you are interested this was a great read the very last book that I finished in February was Horror Mirror Volume 4. This one I gave 5 stars because the moment I had been waiting for since Volume 1 of this manga series finally happens in Horror Mirror Volume 4. I'm not going to tell you what it is, but you could probably guess since this is a romance. Um, it was about the couple. The thing I was waiting for was something between the main characters that finally happened. And yeah. Whew, okay. Hopefully this video is not super duper duper long. If it is, sorry. But hopefully it's not. And even if it is, I hope you guys enjoyed watching it. I'm never challenging myself to do that again. I mean, never say never, but that was a lot. But I did enjoy most of the books that I read, so that's good. I had a lot of five-star reads. I had a lot of books that are probably going to be favorites of the year, all time favorites. Actually, I enjoyed doing this, 28 books in 28 days. Um, I don't know if I mentioned this, but I got the idea to do this from Chelsea, from Chelsea Darling Reads. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.